stop, no U-turn, one way. These aren't just suggestions, they're laws. And in today's world, there are rules and laws and regulations everywhere. But most of the time, rules are meant to keep people safe. This program is about some regulations meant to keep our environment safe. Now, when you think about environmental regulations, you're probably going to picture laws limiting industrial pollution. And this program is about pollution control for a very large industry. But it's not about coal mining or steel making or manufacturing. This program is about agriculture, which is actually a much bigger industry in Pennsylvania than any of those. Ag activities generate nearly $6 billion in sales each year in our state, about $4 billion in animals and animal products, and another $2 billion from crops. We've got everything from corn and mushrooms to dairy cows and hogs. We have more than 63,000 farms, and 98% are family owned. It's a big business with a lot of good history. And when you think about it, agriculture is known as the business that's always practiced good environmental stewardship. Before green was fashionable, before pollution was even an issue, farmers were trying to find the best ways to take care of their land, to conserve their soil, and to make the most of every resource. Now, two ag-related regulations have been updated in Pennsylvania. Chapter 102, which deals with erosion and sediment control and stormwater management, and Chapter 91, which deals with manure management. Both of these were initially created back in the 70s under the PA Clean Streams Law. This video is intended to give you a quick overview of these regs and the reasons why it makes sense to comply. Let's start with the fields. Since the 70s, Chapter 102 covered plowing and tilling activities, but now it includes animal heavy use areas. If you're disturbing more than 5,000 square feet of land, you must develop and follow a written plan to show how you are minimizing soil erosion. The plan centers around the best management practices, or BMPs, in place and planned for your farm and any rental tracks you operate. These plans are in two parts, written narrative and maps of the farm. Let's take a look at this topographic map. It shows the natural slopes drainage areas, and streams on your farm. You can use this to build your plan. Here are roads, buildings, field boundaries, croplands are identified, haylands, pastures, animal heavy use areas, and the location of BMPs on the farm. Every farm is different, and operators can select a variety of best management practices to minimize soil loss and stay in compliance with Chapter 102. For example, no-till planting. This eliminates the need to overturn soil and expose it to the elements. Instead, stubble and roots are left to decompose naturally. This plant material holds the soil. It also encourages microbes and earthworms to help improve soil quality. No-till is a very popular BMP. Ross Orner uses it in Clearfield County, and he sees another benefit to it. The one thing I like about no-till especially on our slopes when I'm spraying. When we used to moldboard plow, you were having to keep your brake, your foot on the brake all the time, holding the sprayer in line. No-till, you're just run along. You don't hardly have to use a brake because you're not sliding on loose soil. Another BMP is planting cover crops that grow quick and thick to hold soil in place through the rain and snow of winter. Cover crops add nutrients and organic matter to the soil. At the same time, they create a mat to help choke out weeds during summer growing season. Farming methods like strip cropping and contour farming are BMPs too. They help slow the velocity of stormwater as it flows across fields. This lowers the chance of erosion. In fields that are steep or have the potential to form gullies, BMPs such as grass waterways and diversions can be installed. Channeling water into these grassy areas helps slow runoff and lowers the risk of erosion. We have a lot of grass waterways on the farm. We have very shallow topsoil here in, on top of the hills, and so we, we don't want any of it eroding away from us. Soil is our precious resource that we want to keep here on the farm. Yeah, my grandfather, uncle, and fathers 
installed these strips back in after the flood in 1936 on the on the home farm and we've continued out across uh, all the farms we farms and contour strips and all the best management practices we can we can put on the farm to hold the soil. This is one of the diversion terraces we have on the farm. It's been installed for many years but still operates. It, it separates, slows down the sl flow of water. Take a look at Logan Farm beside the PA Turnpike in Westmoreland County. They have some very steep pasture and cropland above their new cattle barn. As you can see here, this is the diversion we've constructed to cut off the, the runoff upslope from our new feeding facility here. And then at the end of the diversion, it uh, has a level lip spreader outlet and it kind of works like a miniature stormwater retention pond. It builds up and then slowly releases the water. Keep in mind, the overall goal of your erosion and sedimentation control plan is to minimize soil loss. Conservation professionals call it meeting tea, keeping a healthy balance between topsoil created and topsoil lost. In nature, there's constant soil formation and soil erosion. Farming activities disturb the soil. If left unchecked, topsoil could erode away quicker than it can be formed. Maintaining erosion to an allowable or tolerable level helps keep soils productive. This is called meeting tea. Going beyond tea can gradually help build topsoil in cropping fields. And ultimately, as farmers, that's what we're really trying to preserve. We want to increase its productivity, increase its yields over our, our farming career, and then have something to, you know, for our children to come take back, you know, come and take over. So it's in our interest to even, you know, if we can get below tea. So in theory, we're building topsoil over time. While it's a slow process, it's something that can, you know, have a noticeable impact over a 20-year period. We've taken a look at how these regulations affect your fields, but please understand that there is a lot more to it that we don't have time to cover in a video like this. Your conservation district is here to help you get started and to answer any questions you might have. Now, let's see what these regulations might mean to you in the barnyard. Sometimes these are called animal heavy use areas or sacrifice lots. They must now be included in your erosion and sedimentation control plan. You must show where they're located and what BMPs you're using. I come from a long line of farmers. My grandparents were farmers on both sides. All my uncles are farmers. So farming was in my blood. Uh, when I first bought the farm, the barnyard where the cattle hang out all the time was lower on the hill. It was down on a, a poorly drained soil uh, that first winter. They were down there in mud and it really wasn't good for the cattle and it really wasn't good for the environment. So the second year we took and moved this barnyard up the hill. I went to a better drained soil. It had some slope for uh, drainage. Uh, it was easier to access for equipment so I wasn't getting in there making as much ruts, uh, compacting the soil. And the big thing I liked is I even got further away from the stream. I'm now probably seven to eight hundred feet away from the stream. So any runoff off this heavy use area has to run down through about 800 feet of grass before it even hit a stream. Um, so that makes me a lot more comfortable and, and you know, helps uh, keep the regulatory people happy too. JB's grass filters his runoff. As we saw earlier, Ben Logan tries to limit the amount of clean water entering his heavy use area. He uses grass diversions to channel clean rainwater away from his high traffic or dirty areas. The idea is to keep clean water clean. This place, this around here stayed very solid and dry all winter. It was nice. You know, we had no, um, around the back side of it, there was no water laying or any of that kind of stuff. That diversion cut all that off. Uh, that's water that would have been down here around the, the cattle and in our access road and just making things a mess. 